On today's episode of Flower Hill Farm, will the thrips take over the basement? Will the neem oil work? Or will Nicole land on top? Tune in to the next episode of Flower Hill Farm. Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. And just this past weekend, I let you guys know that I discovered thrips in my basement on my sweet pea seedlings. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on that situation. So if you're just tuning in, over the weekend I noticed some of my sweet peas were starting to get little discoloration on the edges of the leaves. So I started to take a closer look at the plants just to see what the problem was. Did it need nutrients? Was it not being watered enough? Was it being overwatered? Any of those signs I was looking for. And I was kind of looking really closely and I saw my arch nemesis, Thrips. Thrips are tiny, tiny, tiny bugs. You can barely see them. And they are the sole suckers of life when it comes to flowers. So after inspecting them a little bit closer, I saw another and another and another and another and another, and I, I think I killed at least 12 of them what, just within a few minutes of, of looking really closely at the sweet pea seedlings. After a few minutes of crying and desperation, I uh, quickly thought, all right, I can handle this. I've got all the tools here, right here, at this property to take care of this. So I decided to give, go sneeze, went away. Okay, I decided to give the seedlings a treatment of neem oil. Neem oil is something that is effective against thrips and many other bugs as well. A lot of you expressed some concern that I sprayed the plants and then put them back under the grow lights. I, I have to tell you that there there was no burning at all, nothing happened, they were fine. Um, I don't know if it's because my lights are LED lights and they don't have any heat coming off them at all. Uh, literally, you could, I could put my face right on the light and it's cool to the touch. So I don't know if that makes a difference or if it's the lumens that will cause the burning. Anyway, the plants did not burn, they were perfectly fine. Perhaps next time I will wait for them to dry before putting them back underneath the lights though. Just as a precaution, thank you to all of you who warned me about that. I didn't even think about it. I was just, I was uh, like, it was a traumatic situation. I was spraying, moving on, spraying, moving on. But yes, oils can cause some burning. So thank you guys for suggesting that I wait before putting them back under the lights. You guys also had so many good suggestions, both in the comments on the video and I was getting emails and direct messages from a lot of you just with some great ideas about how to manage it. Now, I have to treat my corms because I think that that's where the thrips are coming from. They could have come from anywhere, but I did have a thrip issue on my gladiolus last year. So it just makes sense. So what I'm going to do is bring that bag of corms, I have several bags of corms, there's thousands of corms, up into my garage and I am going to treat them with diatomaceous earth. As far as the other seedlings, a lot of you said the neem oil would be okay on the other seedlings. I don't see any other sign of thrip damage on any other plants. And I have to tell you that a day later, just one day later, inspecting those plants that I had sprayed the neem oil on, I found several dead thrips on those plants. Only one living one. I've been staring at these trays for hours, guys. Not even kidding you. I only found one living thrip on the sweet peas. The other ones that I found were dead, clearly from the neem oil. So I think coupled with the corm treatment with the diatomaceous earth, the neem oil, and then using the mosquitoes bits to water in to take care of any eggs or larvae that might be in the soil, I think that is going to effectively take care of my problem. Inside, who knows what's gonna happen when I get outside. A lot of you guys commented about using nematodes, beneficial nematodes. So nematodes are something that you treat outside in your soil and that over time will stop the development of the pests really. So it's funny that this is happening right now. It's not funny, but it's funny because I actually have a package of beneficial nematodes in my refrigerator. So I just got it from Arbico, but I can't use it yet because I still have snow on the ground. And I was gonna use that in that area, the fenced in area where I plan on planting a lot of my flowers this year. So I do have plans for beneficial nematodes and I've heard nothing but great things. I'd love to increase my activity in that area for sure. Okay, so let's head out to the garage. That's where I plan on dusting the corms. So I'm here in my messy, working garage and I spent hours here at this table yesterday. My in-laws came over, my mother-in-law came, she texted me in the morning and said, do you need help starting seeds? And I said, okay, yeah, sure. And uh, literally spent hours starting seeds. She showed up in her Flower Hill Farm 
sweatshirt that's dedication and we were even able to set up uh, some extra shelving units and lights down in the basement so I'm ready for when I need those. This is my box of diatomaceous earth. It's food grade. I've had this bag for a couple of years. I got it on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. It's, it's like flour, but even worse. It's very fine. So it's gonna get all over. <laughs> it's a very, very, very fine white powder. This is the tool that it comes with to kind of like, if you need to apply it to the plants itself, you can poof, poof, poof. So this is what I use. I bought this a couple years ago because my neighbors have a, like a little vineyard. There are probably 30 vines of grapes and they were having a problem with Japanese beetles. So I said, well, let's try diatomaceous earth. I bought this. I've been using it in my own garden for the aphids and other things in my veggie garden. And I didn't, I didn't use it last year. I don't know why I didn't think to use it and any, anything else. So anyway, so this is what I have. So I got this container. So I thought the easiest way to do this was to put a couple hundred corms here in this bucket, put the top on and shake it around. Put, you know, obviously put the diatomaceous earth in there. So I think that's what I'll do. I'm just gonna use this. So I was just reading that they actually do, there's some websites recommend doing this in the fall, you know, if you don't want to soak your corms in that Lysol solution, you could actually do this right in the fall before you put it into storage. So I'm going to put the top on and just shake it up. It's going to be loud. <laughs> I don't know if I want to open it right away. I think this powder is going to puff out at me. I'm gonna open it this way so it puffs out at you. Oh, there. So, diatomaceous earth is safe for people, but it does something to the insects and like their parts. It's not nice. It's pretty, it's pretty awful. Babe, I was just telling them what the diatomaceous earth does to bugs. Kills them. You opening the door? What are you doing? I have a delivery. Oh, my stuff? I have stuff. What you got? My order came in. All right. This is the side I would put the mats on so it'll reflect the heat. Yeah. Back. Perfect. Yeah. So it's a good idea to let the dust settle, <laughs> as I just found out. Okay, so it's been a minute. Now the bulbs are nicely coated. Nicely coated, and I've got this cardboard box that I'm just gonna dump it back into, and they're gonna stay in this cardboard box until it's time to plant. also removed that pot of eucalyptus that I had gotten the, the soil from out in the garden and brought it in. I've removed that so everything that could possibly have brought in the thrips, well I guess not everything. It could have come in the potting soil, right? So I've, I'll use boiling water like you guys have suggested to you know, kill anything that could be in the potting soil. So I think I have a handle on the situation. I saw one living one, the rest were all dead. I was just down there looking. I did not see anything. So hopefully I found it in time to where it wasn't a bad infestation, but I'm still gonna be like a crazy person looking after these things. So I am not gonna let those things take over. Anyway, so you just saw my father-in-law stop by. He brought me some materials that I'm using downstairs to expand, okay, a lot of things. Expanding a lot of things, but the material that he just brought over is I'm completely out of space on my heat mats and I need more space like today. So I ordered two more giant heat mats. They're the like 20 by 48 inches. So I have another eight feet of heat space 
and then uh, actually it'd be more than eight feet, but eight feet in the length of heat space. And then um, I have a table downstairs that is not really a table. It's more of like a storage bin for potatoes and onions. So it doesn't have a top. So he just brought me a couple of boards to use as a top. And along with some, what is this material? It's almost like an insulation. Okay, so it's, it's like a power wrap house insulation. And this is what I use underneath my heat mats because I find that when I have my heat mats on top of just a piece of wood, it takes them, they struggle to remain up to temperature. So if I have a piece of foam or a piece of insulation underneath them, they maintain their temperature much better. And that might be my imagination, but when I first got those heat mats and I put it on a piece of wood and I turned it on, it couldn't get up to like 74 degrees. It was struggling, it was staying at like 69, 70. I put a piece of foam underneath it, boom, it was at 73 degrees and had no issues staying there. So I think that it works and makes a difference. So hopefully the thrips are not gonna become an issue because I can't handle it. So I've got, I would say 60% of the corms are gonna stay in this Tupperware container. I might lift it every once in a while, make sure it's got some fresh air movement, but I'm not worried about leaving it in here. I think there's enough, you know, it's not airtight. These things aren't airtight. And then the others will stay in this cardboard box. So that's where I have my corms and that's where they will stay covered in diatomaceous earth still. And here's the bag that I use. I don't know why I felt the need to get 10 pounds. <laughs> it wasn't very expensive. So I have 10 pounds and you can, this is, you can use this for a lot of things. It's probably a good idea to wear like goggles and stuff and maybe some gloves while you're working with it, but I didn't do that. Please don't yell at me. I have so many exciting things to share with you guys this week. I cannot wait. I've got some projects going on, um, but little at a time, little at a time, we'll get it out there. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Oh, and happy birthday, Diane. It's, I've removed, I've removed, what can I say removed? I removed, I can't say it right. Cause I can't, I can't, it won't make sense if I say it well, I'm like laugh and say it. <laughs> Can you grab me a water, babe? Is that a fake smile? That was a fake smile. Grapefruit. Why are you looking at me weird?